So as Essendon and Carlton prepared for yet another grand final clash, their sixth, the votes were counted for the Brownlow. Gavin Wanganeen became the first Aboriginal player to win the coveted award. Pipping Carlton's highly favoured Greg Williams and Geelong's ineligible Gary Hocking by a vote. The short-priced favourite Wayne Carey was fourth. In this year of Indigenous people, Wanganeen was a fitting winner. And on grand final day, Essendon would hail another star of Aboriginal descent, Michael Long, as the worthy winner of the Norm Smith medal. 50 metres out. Still going. 30 metres out. Oh, what play. It may have been touched on the line. No. The Bombers kicking away in the first quarter and never giving Carlton a chance. For Kevin Sheedy, it was one of his great moments. His young side contained eight players under 21. Carlton boasted none. It's all over. There's the siren. Victory for the Bombers. Like so many before him, Peter Dacos didn't want to go. After 250 games and more than 500 memorable goals, the Collingwood goal sneak was given the ultimatum by coach Lee Matthews. At the MCG, he said an emotional goodbye in front of 85,000 fans. I was disappointed, uh, but unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, that's uh, just the nature of football, that you can never ever plan for retirement. Um, yeah, I think that, that is governed by uh, you know, people behind the scenes and uh, it's probably the worst part of football, but unfortunately it, it is reality. I was disappointed. In the biggest recruiting coup of the year, Brisbane made up for the loss of Buckley by nabbing Fitzroy's Alistair Lynch. Dermot Brereton left Hawthorne and signed up as a Sydney Swan. But in a reserve grade practice match in March, was back at Glenferry Oval and back in trouble. The 29-year-old star of five premierships with the Hawks would be suspended for seven matches for standing on the head of Hawthorne rookie Raiden Tallis. Uh, that's one of those moments in time where you wish you had the opportunity again. Uh, I got treated pretty harshly, but um, oh, look, there's no use protesting innocence. So the best I could equate it to was it was very similar to a, um, a careless riding charge, that one, but got uh, dealt with fairly harshly. The leading goal kicker of 1993, Tony Modra, continued his magnificent form as the season began. An opening round record of 13 goals from Modra put the Crows on top of the ladder. Richmond's Matthew Richardson was on target. He'd kicked 20 in the first three rounds. And Jason Dunstall continued his relentless drive towards 1,000 goals as he kicked nine in the first three quarters of the opener against St Kilda. Tim Watson was honoured as he played his 300th game for Essendon, emulating club legends Dick Reynolds, Simon Madden and Gary Foles. The celebration soured later in the afternoon as the Bombers went down by nine points to Fitzroy. The goal of the season. How about this dash from Mick McGuan? And McGuan gets past Brown. They're lifting the pies. They can sense it. First 15 minutes ordinary, but since then they've been good. McGuan's had five bounces, nearly get another one. Round he goes, in he goes to an open goal. Phil Massa, stuck by Mickey McGuan, goal of the year. Footscray won their first game against Richmond, but after losing in round two against Geelong, coach Terry Wheeler was sacked. Into the hot seat came Jewel Hawthorne Premiership coach Alan Joyce. In his first outing as top dog, his side lost to Collingwood by a point. The Magpies by a point in a thriller. It's not a fairy tale then for Alan Joyce, but a nightmare. The headliner early in 94 was undoubtedly North skipper Wayne Carey. He kicked seven in a starring role against Hawthorne, and a week later applied the blowtorch to Joyce's Bulldogs with six more. What a mark, what a player. Mark number eight to Wayne Carey. Superstar stuff. Kick. Kick. It's a goal. Thank you, folks. A controversial moment at Waverley, as Collingwood's Gavin Brown is not allowed this goal on half time. Melbourne won by a kick and would sit on top of the ladder with five straight wins. Well, we heard it. Did the umpire hear it? The umpire said, I heard it. Two. There is no score for that. A 
The 20th anniversary of Football Park saw the South Australians win the State of Origin game against Victoria. Modric kicked six in a two-point win. Ablett kicked the goal of the night. And he might well have stolen the show. We saw the best and worst of Tony Lockett in round seven. He would get eight week suspension for this crude blow delivered to Sydney's Peter Caven. But on the same afternoon at the SCG would engineer one of the finest football recoveries in history. St Kilda fought back from a 48 point deficit to win by a point, with Locker kicking 11 goals in a masterly display. You know what that says, Sydney fans, plug a locket has the last word. And the mark of the round, the season, and in the minds of some commentators, the century. He's played it! There would be fiery interludes, St Kilda and Collingwood tangling, and for the third time in five weeks, Wayne Carey would be reported. This time, the raging Brownlow favourite would see his medal hopes disintegrate, as he was suspended for two matches for charging Ian Sartori of Fitzroy. The goal kickers were on target. Steve Kernahan kicked six in the first half against Richmond. Jason Dunstall booted ten against Brisbane in a 99-point win. But Gary Ablett stole the show with an SCG record of 14 goals against Sydney. Around the corner goes the champion, and he's put this one through. What a goal. Tony Shaw became the second Collingwood player after Gordon Coventry to reach 300 games. And on a night for everyone, North Melbourne celebrated its 125th anniversary as 72,000 saw them beat Collingwood. And he gets around onto the right foot. Can he do something? Oh, look at this! How's your lollies with this one? Sydney recovered from a seemingly impossible position in the last quarter to beat Melbourne. The Swans had finally unveiled glamour recruit Brereton. He was in everything as usual. One in about 30 odd. These bikes have got real character, real heart. These are real bikes. Wayne Carey again in the spotlight. Reported for the fourth time in this season, he would be suspended for striking Adelaide's Ben Hart. The Western Oval would provide the backdrop over successive rounds late in the year as two great records fell. Doug Hawkins was greeted by Ted Whitten as he overtook Teddy's Footscray Games record of 321. God, look at this! <laughs> the flick part. And then a week later, it would be Tony Shaw's turn at the same ground as he overtook Coventry's Collingwood mark of 306. Gary Ablett kicked five in his 200th game a week later and moved to 97 on the goal kicking table. Melbourne had a roller coaster ride. After winning its first five, it slid down the ladder before regaining form. Gary Lyon sparked the side with eight in a huge win over Essendon. Gary Lyon did it well. Great play by Lyon. That is a brilliant goal. Kerry and Brereton were in the wars in 94. Dermy would get his second seven-week sentence after breaking Tony Free's jaw with an alleged karate chop. In the same game, Swan Jamie Lawson broke his leg. He would never play again, and in 1999 received medical compensation reported to be worth more than a million dollars. Collingwood and Essendon didn't even get onto the MCG before they started boxing on in round 20. Damien Monkhorst picked out in the melee and fined $3,000. At Optus Oval, Gary Ablett kicked the two goals he needed for his second successive century. In a game, the Cats struggled to win by a point. And they come from everywhere. Robert Shaw announced his resignation as coach of Fitzroy, as merger talks between Melbourne and the Lions were touted. Corey McKernan had been the red-hot favourite to win the Norwich Rising Star. 
when he tripped Jason Ball of the West Coast and was suspended.